the day, a Centers for Disease Control report stated that suicide was the second leading cause of death for 10 to 24-year-olds after a category of accidental deaths that includes motorcycle, excuse me, motor vehicle crashes, falls, drownings, and overdoses. With us today, we have a panel and we'll be speaking about policies, procedures that we can help ring the bell and reduce teenage suicide. And I'm, I'm pleased to share with you that I'm Tina Patterson. I'm in Germantown, Maryland. I am sitting in for Chuck Crumpton, who is on well-deserved vacation today. With us, we have an outstanding panel, and I'm pleased to, I feel kind of like um, Julie Andrews. A few of my favorite people are here with me today, and we're going to have a very exciting conversation. I do want to share with you at the onset of this conversation that we are not mental health care practitioners, and if you do need assistance. We'll talk at the end of the session about resources that are available to you. But if you are in distress at this moment, please call 911. With us, our first uh, guest is retired judge Sandra Sims from Hawaii. And she is not only a retired judge, but she is author of Tales from the Bench, Essays on Life and Justice. Also with us this evening is Louise Eng, who is a partner at Denton's in the Honolulu office. Louise believes the better you know the community, the more you can help your client. Also with us this evening is Rebecca Ratliff, a world-renowned mediator and arbitrator at JAMS, and she is a global thought leader, conflict resolution, and DEI consultant, risk management professional, and the, an adjunct law professor at Howard University, and recently takes on the title of being best-selling author. We also have with us this evening a special guest, and I like to think of her as my sister from another mister, and that is Lorraine Delaporta, who hails from Cranston, Rhode Island. So we are both, um, it's, it's amazing, Lorraine and I never met each other. I originally grew up in Rhode Island, but she's from Cranston, and she is the present, president of the um, Resolution Collaborative. So welcome, and as I mentioned, tonight's topic is teen suicide. Question for all of you, and I know generally on this show we talk about um, partisan uh, partisan politics and how politics plays into. Do you see politics playing into this discussion regarding teen suicide? Anyone? I would I, hope I'm not. I would hope not. Uh, this is such a critical issue, as you given given those statistics. I would think that we have to really, really be more, more, more concerned about what is happening to our young people. We've come out of this. I don't say we've come out of this COVID, but we went and we have come out of an era in which it's had drastic ramifications uh, for all of us, not just here in the United States, but all around the world coming out of the isolation. Um, children were not able to attend schools and when they did they were under some very restrict restrictive um uh, restrictive conditions uh, families were stressed at home uh, employers employees were stressed in their work environments and in the midst of this there were parents um and aunts and and grandparents raising children um so <laughs> this can't be politicized uh there was an article i just was looking at um, that was in the Pacific Business News talking about uh, our children growing up in an age of anxiety, uh, which not just the children, but we are adults as well in this age of anxiety, this sort of, I don't want to call it post-COVID because we're not really out of it yet. We're still having to uh, deal with its ramifications, but that's my thought. I think it's important to note that that COVID is still among us. It's not pand a pandemic, but it's endemic. Um, I have a friend who's an infectious disease doctor. And when he when he said endemic, I I had to look that up. I didn't know what it meant, um, but it's like the flu. It will be among us now, uh, ongoing and forward. And as you've eloquently stated, Judge Sims, uh, we still do not know what the effects of COVID are. As a society, we have not recovered from the thick of things um, globally. And uh, the same 
uh, confusion and instability that's being experienced by adults is being experienced by children for one of the reasons you mentioned, lack of socialization for really a couple of years. Um, and that really affects um, children. I'm an academic and I, I see even in higher level um, learning the, the effects um, that being away, being isolated, uh, the change in how curriculum was presented, um, I, I, I see the effects that that has even on students, um, even at the law school, you know, at, the, at, the, at a level such as, as, as law school, as an example. Um, and so we're still trying to figure out the next normal. Um, we just, you know, it's there was instability caused by overlapping pandemics. So there was COVID. And then uh, I've been published to say um, overlapping pandemics are COVID, civil unrest, uh, weather events, um, the economic downturn, which then caused other um, issues, food instability, job instability, um, a lot of issues surfaced and the age of anxiety that you speak of um, is, is prevalent everywhere and it's being felt by young and old. I think, Tina, if I can chime in, in terms of fear of this becoming politicized, one of the things I worry about is um, with, with politics is access to services for young people, access to good health care, access to mental health services, um, you know, for, for young women, access to reproductive health. I mean, all of those things, I think, ha run the risk of being politicized, and uh, that, that keeps me up a little bit at night. I had to think about that question, Tina, and um, all of you triggered my thoughts, which is that, yes, uh, politics is playing a role. We're seeing that in states where there is not only, um, not only is there the age of anxiety, all those things, all these crisis things, but states that are trying to suppress um, the rights of LGBTQ kids, for instance, um, denying gender affirming care, um, denying the teaching of history that fully recognizes, um, you, you know, the, the bad parts of our history that we should be learning from. So yes, I, I think that it, there's definitely that. I, I'm hopeful that there seems to be more attention paid to mental health. There's obviously not enough because every time we have a mass shooting, um, it's often by somebody who has had mental health concerns, but nothing seems to be done about the gun control issue or increasing mental health services in those states that espouse the use of guns so widely. Louise, it's interesting you should mention guns. I'm going to share a factoid with you that I found in the Centers for Disease Report, Centers for Disease Control Report, and that is guns were used in 54% of suicides um, in, in 2021. I don't know if that number will shift and, and spiral down, but it is noticeable it, that, uh, again, to see such a high percentage. One of the things that experts across the board have been saying, and we have data that goes back as early as um, back to the 1980s. The one thing that experts continue to say is that preventing suicide starts with an open and honest conversation. And I'm curious, from, based on your experience and your interface with youth and, and adolescents, adult, adolescent, um, what do you suggest in terms of where the conversation begins? Well, I think we have to be good listeners, for one, um, it seems, and also maybe just be aware, it just seems like from what the you know, anecdotal stories I've heard, it's kids who feel alone and isolated and seem to have nowhere to turn. And we as adults are really oftentimes just focused on, on living our own lives or, or trying to worry about the care of our kids and maybe not putting ourselves in their shoes very much. Um, one good thing that happened during the pandemic is that the Bar Association did um, have a presentation by a woman who has an expert who has worked in the suicide prevention area, and they have a video. I, want, I wonder if it's out there, but she did talk about red flags and, and things to watch out for. Yeah. Do, you so, the name, do you remember the name of it, Louise? Um, no, I'm going to have to look, but you know, okay. um, Liam Dealey, who is the 
head of our, you know, a substance abuse mm-hmm, program mm-hmm. for lawyers and judges. It's his mother, actually. Oh, um, Mrs. Dealey, who worked in that area, who gave a presentation. And I think maybe also had an associate helper. Mm. I was watching The View the other day, and one of the topics was how involved should parents be? You know, they they had a conversation in the video. How involved should parents be um, in their, you know, watching how their children socialize? Should parents be checking cell phones? Should parents be reading a diary, for instance? And Sunny um, was saying that she still suffers some trauma from feeling betrayed because I forget who it was, somebody in her family um, read her diary. It was very personal. I forget, it might have been one of a, a, a sibling, I forget. But um, then there was this robust discussion around whether parents should be reading a diary. And I believe it was um, Joy Behar who said, Well, I think it depends. Not every child should be keeping secrets because that's how you, you know, they may be, you know, you have to know the child because they they may be putting in the diary that they're being bullied. I mean, how are you going to know? Depends on the age, depends on the relationship, depends on the, the child's personality style, your observations. And I thought those were really good points because while, you know, depends again on the age of the child, how old do they need to be? Um, you know, until they, they, they have, they deserve or they've earned privacy or, you know, there are so many things going on now in our society and we have to keep, you know, tabs on. I hadn't really decided whether I thought parents should read a diary or not, but I agreed with Joy and then um, Whoopi weighed in and was saying that she agreed uh, that you, you've got to know the child. Um, and sometimes you think you do know the child but there are things going on um with social media everybody's overexposed even uh, you know uh, seasoned adults um and so with that you know just given the realities in our society it's important to know what's going on with your child because some people have been surprised by their younger and older children's suicides yeah yeah it, and, and another piece of that, I, those are good points to, to bring up, Rebecca, but another piece of it, though, when we're looking at the suicide rates among teens, we're looking at kids who are not necessarily in situations where they often have access to a parent that is even listening or concerned about what's in their diary. Great point. I, I think those are the, I'm not, not to dismiss the others, but I think when we look at these rates, those are the ones that we, as a society, really because they've got, they don't have a, you know, unless they're organizations or like mental health or whatever that are advocating for those kids, uh, they're out there. They're yeah. just kind of out there and they're more, probably more susceptible to all the other in places. Some of them are like, one of the things I used to notice when I was on the um, state council mental health, we talked about, we often talked about kids that run away, you know, the whole, our laws about truancy and 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 all those things having to address why kids run away and oftentimes when they're running away they're running away from something particularly the girls um there is something that has happened and it is that group that you've got to be i guess not to diminish anyone else but it's that group just recently there was a report that came out about the detention center one of the juvenile detention centers here in honolulu that you're beginning to address that issue. Like, what is it that's going on rather than just saying, you know, you ran away or you didn't go to school today or whatever. Let's find out what's taking place. Let's do, mm-hmm. you know, back to what you were saying, Louise, about the listening. You that listening is, 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 is a way to begin because otherwise, who knows what's going on in, in, in their lives and in their, in their, their, in their minds and, the media, social media is, is, is a, is a plus and a minus. I mean, it's right. It's good. And it's not good sometimes, but I, 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 it's, this is a really tough issue, Tina. Why'd you pick this? This is really hard because, uh, I, you know, it's, we have to be concerned about it and we have to, um, do what we can to not make it. So it is politicized. I tried to, you know, yeah. sugarcoat it, but it, it, it is. I mean, it goes back to the issues, particularly with regard to gun control. Can you imagine the kids who have grown up 
doing um, uh, shooting drills in school. I mean, good Lord. When you're starting like at six years old, particularly the kids that came out of Sandy Hook, they're like college age now. They've not gotten over that trauma. There's no way. What are they carrying with that? Lots of trauma. So, so Tina, I took in preparation for tonight. I took a look. So, the CDC mm -hmm. has great information about what are some risk factors, and I looked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at the, the list of risk factors. And one thing that I found incredibly stunning was um, all of them seem to have some tie to unresolved conflict, mm -hmm. either at school, in the family, in the mm -hmm. community. Um, so this is where I kind of thought about, you know, those of us that do conflict resolution, um, what what can we do uh, to help build some capacity uh, for, for, you know, places people can go to get some skills and build some resilience and some capacity to engage these conflicts. So conflicts on social media, the bullying, uh, you know, the unresolved issues in the family that cause teens to run away. Um, all of it seems to tie back to they don't have a way um, to, to, to resolve those conflicts and to gain that resilience. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A way to process it. I was reading, um, Tina was kind enough to send us some articles um, it, it, just in case we had time to look. And um, really quickly, I was I was looking at um, one of the articles and um, a point that was made, which I think is important, is that a lot of times, uh, so minority children, Black children specifically, uh, have a higher rate of um awesome, yeah. you know, and growing so yeah the statistic is from 20, 2018 to 2021 the racial group that has seen the largest increase in suicides um, among people 10 to 24 years old was black individuals um with an increase of 37 percent um from 2000 to 2020 so um the the this, these are shocking these are shocking rates um and one of the things that was mentioned um as a um, I don't know if it's a cause, but it's a, a reality is that sometimes mental health issues are not diagnosed and they are called behavioral issues versus <laughs> having the child assessed for, yeah, for a mental health diagnosis. And so you have children who are chemically imbalanced. Um, and then as Judge Sims mentioned, you may have a child who was an orphan, lost of a parent. There's lots of lots of reasons that trauma exists here in atlanta um there is covenant house it is a home for um it's a place for homeless teenagers yeah. you're familiar yeah. and my initial in my initial acquaintance with covenant house i asked myself because we were doing community service here with the insurance association um that i was leading here um they were our pick uh twice in the year for community service and my thought was well, ignorantly why would why would teenagers be i had a teenager so why would teenagers be homeless well there are lots of reasons um louise you mentioned um you know rejection so runaways rejections uh, rejection because of um L the lgbt um community so many different reasons this really is um a topic different adverse uh, childhood experiences and, and I guess ACE is a term that's being used uh, in connection with these causes for for teenage suicide. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you asked a good question. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll wait Louise I, I, you, you're going to say something. I'll wait. Oh no I was just going to say you know just as Sandra said and it's really an issue that should not be politicized because you know everybody has kids we all are concerned about them. Um, right. I think part of the problem is, you know, mental health issues or just the talking about them are swept under the rug. Also that, you know, we need to educate ourselves more about what to look for um, in terms of red flags. Um, and it's not necessarily the person who's ex got an extreme mental health problem. Yeah. 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 So I think some self-education is needed for everybody. Right. No, I think that's, that's, that's critical because I mean, you keep hearing these things that when these incidents occur and they say, oh, we have to, particularly, you know, the multiple shootings. Oh, there's a mental health issue. We have to address the mental health issue. I always tend to back away because I, I, I want to say we have to really educate ourselves about mental health. Because a lot of people have mental health issues. They don't all shoot people. <laughs> um, That's right. 
just because someone has a, a, a you know a mental health condition doesn't mean they are necessarily violent. In fact, most are not violent. Um, they're just having issues that need to be addressed that lead to other things, such as particularly with our you know the teen girls, the severe you know depression. It's when 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 kids are depressed, that's what's going to get you into this place of of contemplating things like suicide because of all the pressures that are around it. So I think we really do have to educate ourselves about what is mental health and mental health treatment. I'm, I'm kind of happy to see, and I don't want to use the term happy, but at least that even on social media, there's now this emphasis on having access or finding, you know, people who can address some of your mental health, you know, just to, somebody to talk to. Yes. And sometimes that's just, that may be it. Someone's yes. listening to you. I was at a um, a lunch yesterday with a group of, you know, women who are, who are retired and some of whom have come out of, um, you know, this extreme isolation, um, you know, with COVID, they experienced COVID, experienced, you know, trauma during that time. And one of the ladies was saying, um, she said, just doing this, just sitting here, we went and looked at our art exhibit and then had lunch. And she said, just doing this, this means a lot. I am ready, you know, just to just to connect with people. We were kind of in an open air place and just to listen to people's experiences and stories and laugh. And she said, I, I needed this. And sometimes maybe that's kind of what, we need ourselves so that we can prepare to listen to what the kids are saying, because we got all our own heads all messed up with stuff too. Um, so that that just struck me, and she just was so just grateful for the opportunity just to be out and connect. What they call connecting with with people, not so much always, you know, hanging out at your house or anything, but just connecting, feeling connected. Yeah, and that was what she emphasized. And I thought, oh, this really is a thing that we just need that sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I know for, I'm, on, I'm on that board of mental health. And one of the things that mental health has been doing is doing some trainings in this area uh, for youth suicide and, and uh, training for people to learn about recognize signs for, you know, for bullying and bullying prevention. And, you know, even one, they're even doing a session on, on mental health first aid, sort of like how to recognize mm -hmm. when there's something that needs to be addressed. So you're not just, as my daughter is saying, you know, instead of approaching someone from the perspective of what's wrong with you, <laughs> you know, why don't you do right? Uh, rather than trying to find out what, what happened? How can I help you? What is it? You know? Sandra, you raised a question and I'll be transparent. What made me um, bring this topic forward. And it, it's actually, um, I have to give credit where credit is due. Professor Renelia Randall um, had yeah. spoken to me back in late March, early April, and she shared a statistic. And it's from a report that was published in April of 2023 by Professor Janelle Goodwill with the University of Chicago. And the study is included in the Journal of Racial and Ethnic Health Disparities. Mm -hmm. And this was literally talking about um, as Rebecca stated, this spike um, in suicides, especially among Black or African-American children or youth. And one of the key findings was the feeling of hopelessness about the future as being one of the primary reasons Black young adults consider suicide. And that, that was, it was hard for me to, to hear that because we, we have so much going on and people blame all oh, the, the internet and social media and all these other factors. But if there's a feeling of hopelessness there's a center, there's a root to that hopelessness. Yeah. And how do we as adults recognize that message is, is, is having a detrimental effect on our children? Um, I think what Louise brought, talked about, there's an intersectionality. So let's talk about, or I'm, I, it made me think about, you have an a African-American youth who happens to also identify or be consider themselves a part of the LBGQ plus yeah. community. yeah. So now there's this intersection and that feeling of hopelessness where you've got legislation and you don't have the, the wraparound services that are available. That's what made me want to talk about it, not necessarily as a mental health practitioner, but as 
leaders of change in our communities where we can say, you know, I'm on this board or my, my jurisdiction, our school board has said, we're going to offer mental health services. And we want to communicate to our youth, if you need help, if you're feeling isolated, if you are feeling suicidal and you don't know what quite to call it, but you feel like life isn't worth living, talk to a trusted adult. Doesn't have to be mom or dad, but it should be a trust, an adult that you can trust that's going to listen to you without judgment and get you the help that you need. And I will say this, I, and I think I can say this for all five of us. If you are doing something to hurt yourself, we have an obligation to intervene and get you the help that you need. Yeah. And any, any trusted adult is going to do that. They're not telling on you to get you in trouble, but they're telling on you because they want you to live. And, and that's what started this conversation for me. I thought, you know, th this is something we need to talk about. I, Professor Randall, unfortunately, wasn't available this evening. And that's fine because the, the four of you that are here, your grandmothers, your aunts, your leaders in your community, and you know what youth need. You interface with youth. And that's why I, I wanted to bring this up. Yeah. We have less than a minute remaining. So I'm going to go round robin and give you an opportunity to, to share your final thoughts on this topic of, of teen suicide, policies, procedures, what should we be doing? What can we be doing? And we'll start with Lorraine. Perfect. So thank you for convening this. This is an important conversation. My parting thoughts are that we need to build infrastructure in schools and in communities to engage um, conflicts and things that are troubling youth. Mm -hmm. All right. Fab three, I'm usually part of the fab four, so I'll leave <laughs> it up to you. I, I, I'm so glad that Lorraine is here this evening and I didn't want her to go last, which is what she would try to do. So fab three, I'm going to leave it up to you. Final words. Nine, eight. Oh, sorry. Yes. So does nine, everyone eight, know what nine, eight? eight. Yes. Nine, you eight, can eight. text a message to nine, eight, eight. eight, eight. Sandra, say more about nine, eight, eight, please. That is the uh, line that sort of come to replace to address uh, mental health and suicide issues so you don't have to clog up 911. If you're in that situation or you know of someone or we as those that can, being those trusted adults, we can, we can down, we can down 988. And it connects was, the national, it's a national number, so. It is. I was thinking, listen and lean, um, back to what Louise was saying, we need to, uh, to be listening and we need to allow people who are in crisis to lean on the resources available. That's great. And you know, I think it takes a village too. It's not just family, as Lorraine says, it's schools too. That's usually where the kids have the most interaction with adults. Yeah. And I think that just means again, training and awareness of what we should be looking out for and also making people feel, I think adults too, we're not alone in this struggle. Um, so often you hear that people have a great feeling of relief when they're able to talk to other people and share stories, um, you know, that they're not the only ones feeling inadequate or hopeless, that we all can have, you know, hopefully we can all overcome and help others overcome. Yeah. These feelings. Yeah. Lise, you summed it up nicely, helping people overcome. On behalf of Think Tech Hawaii and the It's Time for Responsible Change episode, I want to thank you for being here, Lorraine, Rebecca, Louise, Sandra. In two weeks, you'll have Chuck Crumpton, who will be back from vacation. It's been a pleasure to work with you this evening, and we'll see you in two weeks, hopefully. Aloha. 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 Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.